The university chancellor enters the auditorium where a lecture about genetic engineering occurs. A young teacher is drawing graphics and diagrams on the whiteboard, and students are redrawing them in their laptops. The chancellor knows that some of these students are not listening to the teacher. He walks around the audience and stands behind all the people. Who do you think is not focused on studying? All students are typing the formulas on their laptops. That girl over there is solving a crossword puzzle on her computer. Detective Richardson is chasing a robber dressed in a clown's outfit. The thief runs into the territory of a big carnival. There are a lot of clowns here. Help find the suspect among them. Catch that guy! His makeup is leaking since he's sweating after running. Also, he is the only one among all the clowns who took off the red nose since he needs to take a deep breath. Angelica gets out of the elevator and goes to her room. She puts a magnetic card to the lock to open the door. Then she turns on a kettle and a TV. At this moment, the phone rings. Angelica picks it up. Hello, it's your neighbor from the opposite apartment. I'm looking at someone trying to break into your house right now. A voice on the other end of the line says, He's trying to pick your lock with a lock pick. I'm sorry, it seems you've called the wrong number. Angelica tells him and hangs up. Why did she think that? Her door has a magnetic lock. Howard got stuck on a deserted island after an emergency landing on his biplane. He had no fuel and no means of communication. He spent the last few nights building a raft from bamboo. He also sewed sails from the parachute. And now, Howard is sailing away from the shore. At this moment, a storm begins. Waves and strong winds carry the small raft further from land, right into the center of the storm. And then, Howard notices a ship. He's screaming for help, but a big wave turns the ship over. There's no chance of salvation. The raft sinks next, and Howard loses consciousness. He wakes up on the island again, surrounded by the ship's wreckage. Howard looks around and starts yelling with happiness. It seems he's saved. Why? There are fuel cans among the wreckage. Howard can refuel his biplane and fly away from this place. There's a secret helicopter hangar hidden among trees at the edge of the forest. A squirrel got stuck on the ceiling between the beams. Johnny, the woodcutter, comes inside and notices the poor animal. He's going to rescue it, but he doesn't know how to get there. There are no stairs or anything that can be used to climb so high. Help him save the squirrel. There's an open vent on the ceiling. Johnny can get to the squirrel through the roof, but how? The hangar is located among the trees. Johnny can climb a tree and jump on the roof. The premiere of some fantastic movie about graffiti culture was held at one local cinema. Some of the viewers liked it so much that they painted the wall of the building. The police caught three suspects. But who's guilty? Look at this girl with blue hair. She has paint on her fingers. Leo, Brad, and Chris walk in the park and tell each other how they spent the weekend. All the guys look rich and successful, but in fact, only one of them is wealthy. Look at them carefully and try to guess who. It's Brad. See the advertising banner of a new action movie hanging on a skyscraper in the distance? Brad's face is on it. Linda comes out of the library. She doesn't notice the curb ahead, stumbles over it, and breaks the heel of her shoe. She calls a taxi and goes to the city center. There's a street with many fashionable boutiques. Linda doesn't know which store to go to. The best shoes in town, the sign on the first building says. The best shoes in the country is written on the second boutique. The best shoes on the continent, the sign on a fashion house lights up. 
The best shoes on the planet is written on the next one. Linda moves on. The best shoes in the solar system. The best shoes in the galaxy. The best shoes in the universe. Then, she notices a small shop at the end of the street. Linda chooses that one without hesitation. What was written there? The best shoes on this street. Roy is sitting in the classroom, listening to two teachers. They're saying essential mathematical formulas to prepare students for upcoming exams. Roy is writing down their words, but he doesn't keep up with the teachers. His hand hurts more and more. The notebook is running out of pages. The teacher's speech is accelerating. They're saying a lot of new information. Ah! How can Roy remember all of this? Help him! He needs to use the voice recorder on his phone. The plane takes off from the airport. A flight attendant walks through the cabin and sees two passengers arguing. The crew member asks what happened. Jay says that Courtney took his place. Courtney claims that this is her seat. They showed their tickets to the flight attendant. She tells them that the program couldn't sell two identical seats. She takes their boarding passes and immediately understands what the mistake is. Look at the tickets and tell who's right here. Seat 14F is written on both documents. Jay's takeoff time is 2.57 a.m. Courtney's is 2.57 p.m. It was sunny when the plane took off. Also, the sun is shining outside the window, so Jay's got on the wrong flight. Alexis runs at the stadium every day, preparing for an athletics championship. And it starts today. Alexis warms up and notices a skinny guy among other runners. His legs look weak and thin. Is he gonna run, Alexis wonders? All participants get up to the starting position. Three, two, one, go! Alexis is running as fast as she can. She's in the lead, and that guy runs much faster and doesn't look tired. He wins. But how did he do it? Alexis realizes he's not a real athlete. He's not even a human. But how did she know that? The guy doesn't sweat, he doesn't blink, and he has two left hands. It's raining. Mike tries to walk fast so as not to freeze. His three goats are following him. He comes out to the river and notices a raft on the shore, but it can only withstand one goat and one human at a time. A tiger is sitting on the other side of the river. Mike can't sail with one goat and leave it with the tiger. What should he do to cross the river? There's no need to cross the river this way. Look, there's a bridge far ahead. There's a house right in the middle of the hottest desert. There is no water, trees, or villages around. Four people live inside the building. The owner and his friends. An archaeologist, an oil worker, and a surveyor. The owner comes to the backyard and sees an empty jug. Who's drunk all the water? We don't have any supplies anymore. He screams loudly. All the friends are in shock too. Those who did that should go to the desert and get some water, he says. I was excavating in front of the house. I didn't touch the jug, the archaeologist replies. I extracted oil under the house. I didn't touch the water, the oil worker says. I was wandering through the desert in search of an underground river or lake, but I haven't found anything. There's no point in sending us there. You know, I think you've drunk it, the surveyor answers. What do you think? Who's guilty? Nobody. The jug was outside. The hot sand and the scorching sun dried it up. Dr. Phil works in a laboratory for the study of microorganisms. He's sitting in his office, reading a new scientific article. At this moment, someone knocks on the door. It's a young laboratory assistant. He looks scared and says he's met a real monster. It has several mouths, long tentacles, and one claw, the guy says. He locked it in the lab. Dr. Phil goes there to see it with his eyes. 
He turns the key in the lock. The door is opening slowly with a cracking sound. The doctor steps inside and… nothing. There's complete silence here. There's no monster. Or is there? Where do you think it is? The monster is microscopic, sitting in the test tube. This is a laboratory for the study of microorganisms, remember? One old head of a large financial company is going to retire, but who will be his heir? Who will be able to manage such a huge corporation? He's calling an emergency meeting. All employees gather in the conference room. The boss gives $100 to each of them. That's all I had when I arrived in this city for the first time. But I used this money wisely and became rich, he says. Who can use this banknote best of all will get the head position in the company. You have two weeks. At the appointed time, all the employees return to the conference room. Someone invested the money in startups. Someone bought shares from other companies. One guy just spent the $100 in a restaurant. Some smart people earned thousands of dollars. There were many worthy candidates, but none of them became the head of the company. Why? The reason is not related to money. The old boss passed away. Oh no! Someone broke into Monsieur Dupont's house, broke into his home office and stole some important things from his safe. Here are two photos of the safe before and after the theft. Will you be able to find five things that the criminal stole? They stole a wad of cash, a ticket to Lyon, and an expensive watch, a necklace, and a gold statuette. Unfortunately for the thief, Gabriel Dupont is actually a retired detective. What a great way to remember the old days! Gabriel decides to examine the house and look for possible traces of the criminal. Do you see anything suspicious in this picture? There are boot marks on the floor. The size is quite large. These are, most likely, the footprints of a man's shoes. Now let's go to the hallway where the footprints lead. Do you see anything suspicious here? There are shards of glass on the floor. It's strange because none of the windows seem to be broken. Could the thief have shattered something that belonged to him? The criminal entered the house through the window. Gabriel decides to explore the garden. Are there any traces there? It seems the criminal dropped his hat in a hurry. Now it's time to listen to witnesses. The day before, there were three people in the house. Gabriel's wife, Chloe, their maid, Mary, and the gardener, Adam. Each of them claims to have seen the criminal, but their stories differ dramatically. Chloe says, I was walking along the corridor and noticed a shadow in the garden. It was a man with long brown hair. He ran away as soon as he saw me, so I thought he was just passing by. Mary says, I was going to the second floor and noticed the shadow. It was a tall man wearing glasses, and I think he was bald. He noticed me and slipped through the window. It looked as if he dropped something when he was running away. I immediately called you, Monsieur Dupont. And Adam says, I was planting flowers in the garden. At one point, I looked up and saw a shadow in the hallway. It was a woman. She was tall, with curly hair. I started running towards the house, but when I arrived, she was already gone. Who is right? Mary. It looks like Adam just saw Chloe, and Chloe spotted Adam, but they didn't recognize each other. As for Mary, she thought that the man had been bald because he'd had a hat on. She also said that she'd been wearing glasses. That's where the shards came from. Gabriel asks Mary for more details. 
she draws a portrait of the thief, a middle-aged man wearing a hat and glasses. The criminal stole tickets to Lyon, so Gabriel decides to go there. He takes a bus to the airport. On his way, he makes a decision to brush up on his detective skills. Which of the passengers doesn't have a ticket? The baby in that woman's arms. Gabriel boards the plane and decides to practice again. Which of the passengers is married? The girl with a ring on her finger. Gabriel arrives in Lyon. He comes to the hotel to ask about the criminal and is now waiting for his turn to speak to the receptionist. While he's waiting, can you guess which of these people is not a tourist? This man. He's the only one who doesn't have a suitcase. Neither does he have any souvenirs with him. Finally, it's Gabriel's turn. He comes up to the receptionist. Hello, he says. I'm a detective investigating crime. Could you please provide me with the footage from your security camera for the past few days? Of course, detective. But could you please help me to solve another crime first? I think my dog has stolen some of my papers. Can you help the receptionist find the dog? Here it is. The dog is hiding under the stairs in the hall. Gabriel has received the footage from the cameras for the last four days. Can you find the suspects in these photos? Here he is. On the first day, he arrived wearing glasses, but without a hat. But look, a couple of days later, he got a new hat and an expensive suit. That's the man I need, Gabriel says, showing the man in the photos. Oh, I know him, the receptionist replies. He's usually absent at night and returns only in the morning, at around 10 o'clock. Gabriel decides to check in at that hotel and wait for the suspect to return. After taking his things to his room, he sits down to solve a few logic puzzles before going to bed. The first one is easy. Here it is. Two fathers and two sons found three oranges and shared them. Everyone got a whole orange. How is it possible? There were three people, a grandpa, a dad, and a son. The second puzzle is harder, but Gabriel still solves it easily. Can you? A woman needs to bake six pies. How can she do that in 15 minutes if maximum four pies can be placed in a pan and one pie needs to be baked for five minutes on each side? Step 1. We put four pies in a pan and bake them for five minutes. Step 2. We turn over two pies, remove the other two, Put two new pies and bake them for another five minutes. Step three. We remove the two finished pies, turn the other two over, put the two half-cooked pies from the first batch and bake them for five minutes. The task is done. The last riddle has a catch. It goes like this. A deaf and mute man entered a store to buy a pencil sharpener. He placed his index finger in his left ear and made a rotational movement near his right ear with the other hand. The seller immediately understood what the man wanted. Sometime later, a blind man entered the same store. How did he explain to the seller that he wanted to buy scissors? He just said it aloud. He was blind, not mute. In the morning, the detective wakes up and goes downstairs to wait for the suspect, and he indeed comes in at 10.15 a.m. It's a middle-aged man wearing glasses. He looks at his watch and says, Oh no, I have to hurry. I'm already 15 minutes late. 
Gabriel immediately jumps up. It's you! You're the thief who robbed me! How did Gabriel understand that? The watch the suspect was looking at was the one that once belonged to Gabriel. No, wait, I... The man says, backing away, and then, suddenly, he dashes away. Oh no! Gabriel starts running after him, but the man has already managed to hide somewhere. He must have chosen one of these three ways to escape. There is a police car blocking this road. The second road leads to an alley. So dark that you can see nothing. The third road is blocked by a big crowd of people. Think! Which way did the culprit choose? He probably picked the third road. Of course, he wouldn't run towards the police. It'd also be very dangerous for him to run in the dark. What if he tripped over, fell down, and got caught? So, he chose the crowd to blend in with. Gabriel notices the criminal in the crowd. He runs after him, but the man disappears around the corner. Gabriel follows him. On the left, he sees the central square of the city. There's a cafe in the center. On the right, he spots a road leading to the park. Which way did the criminal most likely choose? The one leading to the central square, of course. There are not so many people in the park. The culprit would look suspicious running along a deserted path. And if he took a seat in the cafe, the detective would immediately spot him. Finally, Gabriel reaches the square. While he was running, he managed to request police assistance. Now he needs to find everyone who looks like the culprit before the man escapes. Can you find five possible suspects? Here they are. These are all men in hats and glasses. The police grab the suspects and take them to the police station for questioning. They all look very similar. Unfortunately, the criminal has already managed to hide the watch. So, Gabriel has to find another way to identify him. Who is the thief? This man, he has the same wart on his nose as the thief did. Gabriel recognizes the criminal. His real name is Charles Winston. I didn't do anything, he claims. I started running away because I was scared, and you have no proof that I'm a criminal. Really? Gabriel suggests that the police should examine the criminal's room in the lobby. They find a safe there. The password is a four-letter word. There's also a hint next to the safe. 7, 15, 12, 4. Can you figure out the code? The password is GOLD. The numbers correspond to the ordinal numbers of these letters in the alphabet. In the safe, there's Gabriel's gold statuette. Unfortunately, this is all they find. The criminal managed to sell the rest. But what matters the most for Gabriel is that justice has prevailed.